Hello, welcome to my desk. Um, this is a video, um, my little review on this Toyan V8. Um, Toyan, fantastic job. You actually went through and redid the entire engine, and it is great. It was the easiest engine to assemble that I have ever built, and I built a fair few engines. However, there are some things on this engine that could have used the extra time on it to be perfect. And I'm going to start with this distributor right here. So to start, I did have to solder my wires onto the distributor. I got tired of no matter how I did the wires, whether I soldered them flat or left it rounded and twisted, it would only slip off that post and fall off to the side and spark would never happen. It's annoying. I soldered the wires. Make sure the wires are just permanent. That way, you cannot confuse the wires to the plugs. That is how they be. Perfect. Second, I looked up on every single engine I could find because I was curious about why they decided to put the spark, set the spark, in the middle of the posts. No engine I have found, not even, not even that one, not even that one, when I got them, sparked in the middle. They spark dead on the money because you want your spark to travel to the spark plug. They did put non-conductive grease in there. Fine. Fantastic. However, it's completely stupid and pointless when these little posts here have a spring and a ball that constantly rides the surface of that rotor. You want to take a wild guess what that does? That's right. It digs a perfect circular groove in that rotor. And it has. Um, and when it does that, those little balls push that non-conductive goop out of the way. Anyone want to take a wild guess what happens when it does that? That's right, that tiny little groove that goes all the way around can now travel in between the posts. So when one is supposed to fire, sometimes it will hit one perfect. Most of the time, it skips one and jumps right to five. Five is not even ready to fire yet. It should not be sparking in the middle. It should be sparking on the money. The way to fix that, take out your distributor, take it completely apart. You want the rotor that's inside of it and the stem and metal plate that it's sitting on. Uh, when you look at your cap, you'll see four feet or four circles underneath it. That's the feet that is pressed onto it. It's not glued on, it's pressed on. Um, you're gonna take it completely apart. Don't worry, it only goes on one way. Um, once you have the actual rotor bit itself in your hands, you're gonna pull that top layer off from the bottom layer, get rid of those four feet, sand those four sides flat so that where it's flush, and using a single drop of glue on the center, you're gonna put your rotor back on. Since my strip was dead over the magnet, and it sparked in the middle, I knew I needed to adjust my strip so it was in between both magnets, give or take a tiny bit on either side until it sparks on the money. Once you have it where you want it, and you can, you don't have to put the distributor in the engine, you can put it back together, uh, hook it all up and spin it with your fingers, try not to zap yourself with the wire that's dangling, um, don't plug it into the distributor, you'll zap yourself, just leave it off to the side and spin it. And, and watch that tip uh, hit. You want it, all right, you want it dead on the money, which is why I did that modification. It sparks dead on the money and you don't have to twist the rotor cap. They should have done that in the first place or actually to be better off, they should have moved the hall sensor position to be underneath the post so that where it all lines up and sparks where it should. Um, but in all reality, it's annoying, but it is a very simple fix to do. And now my distributor looks stock, aside from the soldered wires, um, and now sparks on the money. Another big issue with this carburetor. The metal strip that is on that faceplate darn near sticks out literally to the edge. Like, you can see where I gooped mine, um, but it stuck out right to the edge. That is the most stupid thing you could do, Toyan. Um, it does not need to stick out that far. 
Um, so what is happening is it's supposed to spark here on the money, and it does. However, electricity likes to take the path of least resistance. This wire to the spark plug has more resistance than this spot right here does to the body. So it's just going to jump to the body every time, and your engine's not going to spark when it's supposed to. I had to also take out that strip. It's also press fit in and cut off a little bit so the ball just barely rides it and goop it in so that where it can't jump to the body it can only jump to the wires um, and it seems to have fixed it so now my distributor is working as it should as intended to be on the safe side I did add some non-conductive grease just to make sure it can't jump but it shouldn't jump the next thing is this carburetor you might notice I control alt deleted my bulb to be honest this bulb is useless. This engine, when spinning at high enough RPMs, you can watch it. It sucks up fuel on its own just fine. Um, all these carbs are pretty much built the exact same way, the same patterns, the same designs. Some are just different with extra holes on the inside for pressures or whatever it is. So keep in mind, but I had tons of these carbs, so I swapped mine out. And as you can see, it's still full of fuel because... It, these are pump carbs. The primer bulb just helps you prime it for when you run out of fuel. Um, I didn't need the primer bulb, so I got rid of it. Um, the intake. I'm not sure what they were thinking, um, but you could tell with the design on this one that they had set it up to be a dual carburetor system because um, there is no channels in between this port right portion right here. Um, it is separated, and it is separated by this little plate right here. This plate, as you can tell, I got rid of the lips on mine because uh, those lips are stupid. They're pointless. I'm not going to lie, they're pointless um, because you'll be drowning it in fuel to try and get any resemble of fuel or uh, uh, fumes into it so it will start. And even with these removed, it really didn't help. This plate, uh, I'm just going to be honest, unless you're doing a dual carb setup, because this plate blocks off both banks of four. Get rid of it. It's pointless. Every engine that I have, whether it's the D6 here, or the GNN100, or even this little Musa. Yes, I painted it red. All the carburetors lead directly to the valve ports. So why they had a stupid divider plate in here, I'm not sure why. It was probably to help break it up. Air-wise, um or something like that, but it just feels too restrictive on the fuel end, um, and it's not letting these engines run right. Um, I did get mine to run, as you've seen in that video, without this plate. Plate's not needed, get rid of it. You will have to go to shorter screws on your intake, but that's fine, it's not hard to do. Um, another simple thing, to be honest, I, uh, I've re besides from these two things, I really haven't had an issue with this engine. Um, it is a nightmare to start once it does get going. It's just fine. Um, I'm not sure if I'm still missing a portion of the picture here. Um, but I did, I did get it to start, and I'm still tinkering with it. I did get these engines to tinker on it. Toyan did do a good job at reworking the entire engine. Dual piston rings, perfect. Gasoline and spark perfect i love nitro don't get me wrong but i don't want a nitro engine i want a gas engine thank you toyan finally a gas engine um i haven't really had any problems with anything else the bottom end was really tight on pistons so i did use some aluminum tape for some shims and that seems to have fixed that problem um works just great um for this wire here I grabbed an XT60 connector, a male and a female, cut the plastics off, and I used either end so that where I can just unplug and plug in my wire. Works great. You had a little piece of rubber tubing on it so you don't zap the shit out of yourself. Um, and it's perfect. So now I can just unplug it or plug it into any distributor I want, whether it's this guy right here or the D6 down there. Um, I can use one CDI box for all of my engines. That have a distributor at least. Um, 
Oh, yes. I put my resistor down here, um, completely away from everything else, because um, I noticed that when it was way up here, it was causing a bunch of issues. Um, I think the surface area of the wire coming out of it was too small compared to the surface area, the brass bits and the wires that were around it. Um, so swapping it down there seems to have fixed it just fine. Um, but other than that, this, this engine's cool. Um, this exhaust, while it's pretty, while some people might absolutely love it, I hate it. I hate these exhaust pipes with a passion. Um, yes, I know a lot of these engines are supposed to spray oil out totally fine, um, but... I hate this. It should have just been a regular old exhaust. Uh, but whatever. I digress. I'll probably make my own exhaust pipes. Um, but yeah, no, that's it. I'm waiting on parts. I don't have my starter gears yet, so I've been using a um, one-way bearing that slips onto the crank and using a drill to start it that way. This guy right here. Um, and it seems to be working just fine. But other than that, this engine is great, but Toyan, I'm not going to lie, you could have taken just a little bit more time for these two parts right here. Uh, and you can still do that. Get rid of this big carburetor and just start giving people two of these with a new intake supporting two, one of these for a dual carb setup. And I promise you, fuel delivery would not be an issue with these carburetors. It would, it would get fuel as it should. Um, cause I know one of these can easily feed those four cylinders. I'm just saying, um, and then redo your guys's distributor. I'm sorry. You guys build these engines of all the people. You should know that real engines or these model engines spark on the money. Yes. Spark will jump from your distributor caps. It, it does it on this engine too, but it's sparking from the strip to the screw that it's supposed to go to. Um, none of these had grease in them at all. There's, there's, there's no, real, no real need for grease. Because um, if you do your distributor right, it should be sparking as it should all the time without issue. Um, but yeah, no, I'm still tinkering on this engine. I'm still learning it. I'm still toying with it, figuring out what it likes, what it doesn't like. Um, and it is a trial and error ordeal i don't know if dennis or johnny q90 got engines that were tested to work perfectly before they got shipped off to make them look better and then the rest of us got this but i don't want to believe that because aside from one other person that i know of everyone else's toy and v8s run just fine um and, uh, one last thing toy and did goof they put my block in backwards so my intake port got put to the rear and the exit port got put towards the front. So I had to drill my own holes and seal these up so that where it wouldn't leak. Um, but other than that, that's all I really had to do to this engine so far. Um, hopefully I can get it started today so that where I can make a video of it running and then toy with it, let it break itself in um, and run this thing. Uh, so thank you much for watching. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Don't shoot me an email. Just leave a comment. I read them all. I see them all. Um, and I'll help you out here. Because um, other than that, this is a great beginner's little V8. It's a nightmare. And with a little bit of tweaking, it can be a really amazing introductory V8. Um, that's way less than a Sisson or an Ingemore. Toyan is so close. So close but like with video games, I wish they'd have just taken just a just a little bit more time on this V8, um, so that where people can just build it and run it, because um, that's what I assume these V8s are. These Toyan engines are for build it, run it. Well, I built it, but I can't really get it to run, um, and I sort of see why people were having issues with the first gen V8s. But the, those issues were way worse than these ones. This this is just spark and fuel delivery issue it's got great compression um, and when it does run it runs fantastic um, so keep up to date if you haven't i typically don't really ask subscribe leave a like so you know to keep an eye on your toyan v8 updates with this one um, 
as I am basically your guinea pig. I have tried everything on this engine, and I will keep trying everything on this engine until I get it to run better than how Toyan could ever want it to run. Um, so yeah, thank you much for watching. Um, I'll see you later.